In today's episode of the podcast, I'll be catching you up on the progress I've made on my knitting projects over the course of the last week, which includes three finished objects. And I'm also gonna be sharing with you a swatch that I just finished for my future terrazzo sweater. So grab your project, something cozy to drink, and let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 65 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I have a lot to share with you guys today, including three finished objects, but before I jump into any of that, I wanna just get some admin stuff out of the way First. first things first, I wanna let you guys know or remind you guys that Wool Needles Hands has a website now. There is a website dedicated to the Wool Needles Hands channel here on YouTube where you can catch up with recent episodes and link directly to them, but it also gives you direct links to all of my Ravelry pages and some other various different things that I'm involved in over there as well. Plus, there is a tip line link at the very top of the website that allows you to submit ideas for future videos directly to me. So if you have an idea for a future midweek ramble, please head over to the tip line, leave your idea there. I will read all of them. I will not be able to reply to all of these. However, I will be reading all of them and considering them for future midweek ramble episodes. Also, and this one's important, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the homepage of the Wool Needles Hands website, which is woolneedleshands.com, you can sign up for the monthly newsletter. The first issue of the monthly Wool Needles Hands newsletter goes out this week, and I plan on sending out new issues at the end of every month just to update you on what's been going on with me creatively things that I'm working on, plans that I have for future videos, and various different things like that. Each newsletter will contain photos and occasionally video links or videos embedded in the newsletter to just give you a little bit of a behind the scenes uh, peek at what's going on over here in Wool Needles Hands headquarters. Also, if you would like to further support the channel, check out the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. I am wearing a shirt that is, um, you can find in the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. It is featuring a painting in gouache by yours truly. It is based off of a painting that I did over the summer that you see here. One of my damsels, my other one, you can see on a coffee mug in the shop. It's this one. Um, I have ideas for a future damsel that I plan on doing very sh uh, in the near future. But if you would like to support the channel, there is lots of fun merch over there in the Wool Needles Hands merch.com merch shop. Definitely check it out. Your support is so greatly appreciated. Okay, I am ready to dive in. Before we start, really quick, all of the patterns and everything that I mentioned here is linked down below in the description box. I even posted a little short that shows you how to find the description box. And really quick, just so you know, because I know sometimes if you're watching this on a mobile device, especially if you're watching this on your home television, it's hard, you, you can't find the description box in that situation, but if you're on a mobile device, the description box is becoming increasingly more difficult to find. And so I'm gonna show you really quick, I'm just gonna pop a little snippet up right here to show you how to find the description box. It's either over here, it's over here. It's gonna be over here. <laughs> this is how you would find the description box below this video. Everything I talk about is mentioned in this description box. If I forget something, just ask me in the comments down below, but this kind of helps you figure out how to find that description box so you can find all of the links to the things that I mentioned here. All right, I'm gonna roll it one more time without talking to disrupt you, and you can just see really quick, this is how you find the description box. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's jump right in. I wanna share with you my finished objects first, and I have three, and that is so exciting for me. And they're little, um, but that's great because I feel like little projects like this reignite that fire to, to like get projects um, moving. Not necessarily to rush them off the needles, but it just builds that momentum and you feel really accomplished, even if you're completing just small little things as you go. And I'm really happy to have these finished. So I have three little finished objects I wanna share with you guys. And then I'm gonna share with you some of the works in progress that I have that I've been tinking away on, or I should say knitting away on in between finishing these. And then after I share those with you, I want to share with you the swatch that I know many of you have been waiting for of the yarns that I'm going to use for my future terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit. So first, let's go ahead and dive into my finished objects. And the first one I want to share with you is the one that's on top here. These are my fire pit mitts. I shared with you a um, knits in the wild short here on the channel and kind of gave you a little bit of a 
I don't know, just like a show off, a show and tell of these after I finished them when I was out walking Pepper. Ugh, and you guys, they are so perfect. Um, you know, before I put them on, I want to just show them to you. Okay. So fire pit mitts. This is a pattern by me, yours truly, Taylor Earl. And I love this pattern. It's such a simple, easy, just whip up a really great functional pair of fingerless mitts in no time pattern. Great for gift giving, great for beginner knitters, just all around great for everybody. Um, these are them. And this is the short version. The pattern has two different versions, a long tapered version. And then this short version right here. Ugh! look how pretty they are. And the yarn here is just so lovely. It kind of reminds me, I mentioned this on the last episode. It reminds me a little bit of newsprint. I don't know, just something about the, the gray background with those real contrasty layers of blue. Ugh, really pretty. This yarn is, oh, and you know what? I wanted to show you how much I had left. Just hold on one second. Okay, I have what I need here. All right, I have that. This is the yarn that I used. So this was a skein of undyed BFL Gotland yarn that I just had in my stash. And it's, um, it's a really pretty kind of like a heavy DK weight. And I topped it with a skein of kid mohair silk from fiber for the people, which is my hand dyed yarn uh, company, which is why you hear me talk about this or use this yarn frequently. Um, this is in the evening colorway. So these two together, so pretty, created this gorgeous fabric. I love pairing variegated mohair over the top of a solid base yarn. It is just so lovely to, to watch the fabric develop. I have a video on my thoughts about this, and this is a video that I plan on remaking and kind of refreshing, and I'll link to that video here, but you should definitely watch it because it does give a little bit of insight into pairing mohair with other base yarns for the purpose of developing kind of like color interest, and that's what's going on here. It's just a really appealing fabric because of that cool variegated mohair over the top of what would be just a very plain but ble but beautiful neutral and natural gray color but you guys loving these okay let me go ahead and pop them on so you can see how they look Ugh, and they're so comfy too and super soft i ended up blocking these if you watched my short on the knits in the wild i had not blocked them yet Blocking makes a huge difference. Um, the the edges of them kind of stay in place a little bit easier. Not that they roll down a lot, but because I design these to have rolled edges, I like the way that looks. I kind of prefer that in fingerless mittens to ribbed edges, just a preference of mine. And so there's gonna be a little bit of a roll that happens on the edge there. But once you block them, it kind of keeps that under control so it's not completely rolling down on you. Makes a big difference. But you guys, just how beautiful that fabric is and how cool these like mitts are just a very classic wear with everything style of fingerless mitt it's great for just throwing it on if you have to run outside to walk the dog or if you're going to the grocery store or if you're going to be outside I, whatever reason you're cold and you need to warm up the hands but you need access to your fingers you guys, you can't beat it. So these are, this is the fire pit mitts. My pattern, it's linked down below. All of my um, patterns that I've written are linked down below. So essentially my Ravelry pattern store is linked down below, but I've linked to this one separately as well. So you can find it there. Easily modifiable. You could totally add some color work in there if you wanted. Loving that. So these are my fire pit mitts, all finished, ready to be worn. I've worn them once, but now that they're blocked, I'm gonna be wearing them all the time love them so much. And before I set these down really quick, I wanted to share with you, and I don't do this a lot in the podcast. I probably won't remember to do it every time I have a finished object, but I do want to share with you the amount of yarn that I have left over. Um, over here, I have a scale that's kind of off camera. You can't really see it, but it's just a basic scale. And I am going to weigh what's left of the yarn that I used for those fire pit mitts. So these were both 100 gram um, cakes of yarn, uh, cakes of yarn, well, cakes of yarn, but these are from 100 gram skeins. Take that back. 50 gram skein of the mohair, because that's how mohair is put up in 50 gram skeins for the most part, 100 gram skein here. So that's what I started with when I started my um, fire pit mitts, and I'm gonna tell you how much I have left over. So the BFL Gotland, I have 59 grams left over of the BFL Gotland, and this is the kind of heavy DK worsted, 
59 grams left over. So that means that if this is 100 grams, I used just over 40 grams of yarn. All right, and then the Kid Mohair Silk starting out at a 50 gram skein. And actually, I had swatched with this before. So when I started this, I think this was a little bit less than 50 grams, just to bear that in mind. And I have 39 grams of this left over. So you could, I could work up easily another pair of fire pit mitts in the same yarn. I could probably even pull out um, the long tapered variety in the same yarn, give it as a gift, use up the yarn that I'm gonna have in my stash. Bada bing, bada boom, done and done. Okay, so that is uh, my fire pit mitts and the yarn that I have left over. Such a great pattern. Need I say more? Probably not. Okay, the next finished object that I want to share with you guys is so cute. I'm so excited about this. This is the neighborhood hat that I knit for my son, Angus. So he's my oldest. He's seven going on eight. He turns eight in February. Um, he is a little guy. He's tall, but he's slender and he's just kind of a little guy. And so from this pattern, I knit the smallest hat size because I just knew that he would need something a little bit smaller. So this is the neighborhood hat, a pattern by yours truly, can be found in that same link that I mentioned. It is a basic kind of um, somewhat slouchy beanie with a really shallow ribbed um, brim. And here it is. Now, the dinosaur is something I added. So I wanted to share this I was ex especially enthusiastic about sharing this because of the adorable dinosaur. So that is a patch that I picked up at Michael's, but it's such a cool patch. And with this yarn color, um, which is fiber for the people in the sapphire colorway, it just really pops. So this is the sapphire colorway. This is essentially what the hat would look like without a patch. Cute little pom-pom in the same color, which is what Ingus requested. But look at how that patch just pops on that background. How cute is that? And the hat is just, like I said, a very basic kind of slouchy shaped beanie um, with a really narrow ribbed hem. You can see kind of like a shallow ribbing happening here. And the reason I designed it that way, so the hat is designed, I'm gonna just continue to show you here. The hat is designed to have a real tight gauge ribbed brim that's relatively shallow. And then, there's a little bit of shaping that happens here. So there's a few increases that happen right after the ribbing to give the hat a little bit of a balloon shape. So when it's worn, it goes, it snugs up right where the, the uh, headband, the brim is, and then it kind of comes out ever so slightly to wrap around that widest portion of your head. And then it, you know, narrows back out and decreases for the shaping of the crown. And it has just a little gentle slouch in the back. It's a lovely hat for all ages, especially little ones. I just think it's the perfect, it's comfortable for them because it doesn't hug, it hugs around where the brim of the hat is so everything stays in place, but it's not squishing their hair down. And for little boys, I think that can become bothersome for them, causing them to take the hat off when they probably should be keeping it on because it's cold outside. This just makes it a little bit more wearable. And then even for adults, it's kind of nice to have that additional room at the top just to give it some extra shape. And that slouch is really gentle and lovely. So this is kind of just that basic throw on wear with everything hat, the neighborhood hat. I called it that because when I knit the original version of this, I was wearing it a lot when we were sitting outside with our friends in the neighborhood, watching our kids play. Just, it's just that perfect throw on hat. And this is Angus's and I'm loving it. And the dinosaur is just to add that little boy touch to make it his own. And he can finally wear it now. I haven't, <laughs> I've been withholding it from him because I didn't want it to get like, I don't know, God forbid it got lost before I could share it with you guys. And so now that I'm, I've shared it with you guys, I can, I can let him wear it. And oh, and the patch, by the way, is sewn on. Um, this was an iron-on patch, but I was not about to iron a patch onto the yarn. I would, that would give me the heebie-jeebies. So I did sew it on, which, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of sewing patches on, but it does really look awesome. So I'm happy that I did it. But that is my neighborhood hat by Taylor Earl. Yours truly, Knit and Fiber for the People yarn in the Sapphire colorway. And when I started this, if you've been watching the podcast, I mentioned to you that I started that hat with the yarn from a previous hat that I had started knitting, but I didn't have enough yarn to finish the hat. I can't remember how much I started with, but I wanna tell you that I probably started with about 85 to 90 grams of yarn. Um, when I started that. So that would be where this started. This is what I have left over of that yarn. Let's go ahead and weigh this and see how much I have left. 
after all of that. Okay, so I have 21 grams left, which makes me think that I probably started maybe with even like less than 85 grams of yarn, maybe 75 to 80 grams of yarn, um, because I only have 21 left. Seems to be seems to be right. Okay, last of my finished objects, and I'm really excited about this one. This one is for me. Um, the fire pit mitts are for me, and this one is for me. And these are little things that I've been wanting um, as the weather gets colder outside. And this is my baggy hat by Petite Knit. So a few episodes ago, I had mentioned to you that I wanted to knit um, kind of like a beanie style hat, but that was a real light, slim line hat. Um, something that wasn't super chunky that I could throw on really quick, goes with everything in a nice neutral color to kind of be modeled after a hat that I already own, um, which is a store-bought hat. I wanted it to be similar to this particular hat. And you can catch this in two, um, two podcast episodes before this one. So this is my baggy hat by Petite Knit. It's just the perfect hat, very lightweight. You can see how lovely and light the fabric is here. This is essentially a DK weight hat. Um, it's knit using a fingering weight yarn paired with a mohair yarn to give kind of a DK gauge. And it's just a basic rolled brim beanie and it has really cool decreases. I really love those like stitched together looking decreases. Really cool. Um, I knit this using two different yarns, like I mentioned. So the base yarn that I'm using here is by Woolly Mammoth Fibers. She's a an Irish natural dyer. Her yarn is lovely. This is a BFL fingering weight yarn. And then I topped it with this skein of Kid Mohair Silk by Fiber for the People in a Lucky Strike colorway. Um, you can learn more about what the Lucky Strike colorways are. I'll link to that down below in the description box. They're just special one-of-a-kind colorways that allow me to prevent unnecessary waste in my dye studio. And this one came out really pretty. It's kind of like an earthy mauve almost. Has that nutty brown in there with a little bit of pink. But these two together created this really gorgeous fabric. Oh, and it's so soft too soft and lightweight and airy. The stitches just evened out so beautifully after blocking. I'm really, really loving this. I will be doing a Knits in the Wild short where I share with you this hat. Um, I'll pop it on and wear it while I take Pepper on a walk and I'll share it with you there. I will also do a little photo montage showing the finished object in action. I know I will be wearing this hat all the time. It's that perfect lightweight hat. I mean, just look at that lovely drape, how nice and lightweight that fabric is. Ugh, so lovely. So that is my finished baggy hat by Petite Knit. That three finished objects, you guys, like look how fun. Three finished knit accessories in the bag. Oh, and I, again, I don't want to forget, I want to weigh the left uh, the leftover yarn from this project. So this mohair that I used, it was not a full um, cake of mohair because I had used this previously in another hat that I shared with you guys, I don't know, I want to say four podcast episodes ago. I'll click up a little picture here so you can see that hat. So I had already used a good amount of this in this previous hat and I had some leftover and I still have this leftover. So this was a full 50 gram skein of mohair and I have tw 21 grams left of that and then the woolly mammoth fibers this was a 100 gram skein a full skein of woolly mammoth and I have 60 grams left so this only used 40 grams of fingering weight yarn and this I mean I don't remember how much I started with I should have done that first but I have to assume, I mean, there's 21 grams of this left. So it just, it didn't use very much at all. I have a lot left over. So that is what I have left over from my baggy hat. These hats are very economical. If you wanna knit more than one for gifts, it, you're gonna get a lot of, you know, a few, I would say, of each of these things out of full um, skeins of yarn. If not, in the very least, you get a couple. And that's great, especially for gift giving season, you can really use up those you know, kind of oddball skeins of yarn or skeins of yarn in your stash that you're just not sure what you're gonna be doing with them. At least you know that some of these projects you can get multiples out of 
few skeins of yarn. Okay, so I wanna share just a little bit of the progress I've made on some of those works in progress of the other little projects that I brought up on the last episode of the podcast. I haven't made a ton of progress, but I've made some. And now that these are off the needles, I'll be finishing these other works in progress between now and the next time we meet for the podcast episode, which is next Sunday after Thanksgiving. So I wanna start with sharing with you what I have so far on my Queen Elizabeth II washcloths because you can actually start to make out her like profile here and it's really cool. So these are my Queen Elizabeth II washcloths that I shared with you on the last episode of the podcast. I'm knitting these two at a time on one long uh, circular needle and I'm using a Pima cotton yarn. Really, really lovely yarn. You can use any cotton yarn. This is a worsted weight. Um, I really love the Pima. It's so nice. It has like a sheen so you can really make out that design in the light. Um, so let's hope that you can make it out here. So here is my first, you know, I'm gonna hold this blue one behind it to give it a little bit more structure. <laughs> okay, I hope you can make it out. I, I can totally see it, it's really cool. It's so cool. I'll be taking some proper pictures of these when I finish them and you'll really be able to see the image. And as I'm looking at this in person, like it's very noticeable. So it's really fun to kind of like fin finish various different parts. Like I was knitting them thinking like, oh my gosh, she has eyes, she has a nose, <laughs> it's so cool. So yeah, you can probably even see it more with this blue one. How fun is that? And I love, again, I mentioned this on the last episode, I love how substantial these washcloths are in terms of size. They're really big. And so you get a really good look at that cool like pearl bump image. I am like all about these pearl bump washcloths right now. Like I totally see myself knitting a set of these, uh, maybe not the Queen Elizabeth II ones, but there's other designs, knitting myself a set of these because I love them. So these are my Queen Elizabeth II cloths. I will link to the pattern down below and knitting these two at a time has been a complete pleasure. It takes a little bit longer. Like, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit longer or at least it's going to seem like it's taking longer because when you put two of these on a needle, you have um, twice as much, uh, twice as many stitches. So it's like you're knitting a larger piece, but when you're finished, you're finished with two. And then, I mean, just makes a lot of sense. You just feel so much more accomplished because I look at this and I have two, you know, more than half finished objects here. So I highly recommend casting onto some pearl bump washcloths. You're gonna find use for them. They're super fun to knit on. You get to use some really nice soft cotton yarn. Loving that. So these are Queen Elizabeth II cloths. Okay, last but not least, I wanna share with you my swatch that I am um, using for my future Terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit. Now this is definitely a future knit. I'm not ready to cast the sweater on now, but I really did want to see the two yarns that I've chosen paired together and to share it with you guys here just to get excited about the prospect of knitting this sweater. So the yarns that I'm using, um, one of the yarns that I'm using is the one that's recommended in the pattern and this is by Noro. This is the Silk Garden Sock Single by Noro and this is in the Omitama colorway and this is the one that's like I said recommended in the pattern, a very difficult to colorway to find almost impossible right now. And I'm not sure if they're discontinuing it or what, but it's really difficult to find. And I'm pairing this with a skein of Fiber for the People Kid Mohair Silk in kind of a really beautiful eucalyptus gray color. It has a touch, a touch of green to it, but the eucalyptus green is just very faint. So it's mainly a nice kind of warm gray. So those two together are going to be the yarns that make the fabric for my future terrazzo sweater. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, in the form of a swatch. Now, my gauge swatching game isn't really all that great. I, I do think it's important to do some form of swatching, but I'm not the most um, disciplined swatcher and you'll see that here. I do what I can to give me an idea of what I've got going on. I don't worry so much about row gauge, especially with a top down sweater where you can really adjust the length of things as you go. So this little swatch was just to give me a general idea of how many stitches I'm getting to four inches and it's not blocked. Um, I just kind of adjust in my mind for what blocking might do and then I go accordingly. So take that with, take that for what it is. I mean, you may or may not agree, your mileage may vary, but that's the way that I do it and that's the way I'm doing it here. So, you know, don't judge me too harshly. So this is the swatch that I have for these yarns and just look how lovely that is. How pretty and subtle and the lovely pops of color from the yarn. The yarn is actually a marled yarn. 
you can see that if you look close. Um, that it says it's a single ply, but whatever all these all the single ply is made up of is just marled strands and plies of various colors. So it's really lovely. So you're gonna get that variegation running throughout the fabric. And then it's muted by that really pretty gray mohair. So that is my swatch for my terrazzo. And I think it's going to be just beautiful. I got gauge if you consider blocking. <laughs> so it calls for 17 stitches per four inches and I got 18 stitches per four inches. When I block this, I block things very gently. Um, I imagine that that single stitch will get taken up with blocking. And I'm also knitting a small size to make up for any, you know, additional growth that I might experience with blocking. So I'm pretty confident um, in this swatch. I'm not too concerned about it. And I really do love the fabric. I wouldn't want to go down a needle size anymore and tighten this up because I feel like this is a really good sweet spot for the fabric. There's just enough of a gap going on to make it comfortable to knit with. And also too, it's gonna be nice and wearable and drapey if it opens up a little bit more with blocking. So I don't really wanna sacrifice this fabric. So I will just make do with what I have here. And if I need to make adjustments as I knit the project, I can just make adjustments um, in terms of stitch count at that point. And I actually talk about this um, general idea in a previous video, um, I will link to it here. It is just a midweek ramble where I share with you how to determine which size to knit based on the swatch that you knit um, that has not been adjusted. Like you take the needle and the yarn that you wanna use, you knit a swatch with that, you fall in love with that swatch. How do you know what size of the design to knit to make sure that you can use the needles and the yarn that you've chosen. So you can check that out if you want some additional help with that. But in the meantime, that is what I have for my terrazzo sweater down the road when I'm ready to cast onto that. That has been a full episode of lots of really lovely cozy projects. I hope you guys took something away from that, found some ideas or inspiration for some things to knit for yourself. It is gift giving season and any of these projects here would be perfect for gifts. So definitely check the links down below in the description box. It's all there for you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you took any value or enjoyed yourself at any point during this video. It means more than you know and it really helps the channel to grow and thank you, I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to check out the merch shop and also keep Wednesday open because the episode of the Midweek Ramble that is coming out this Wednesday is going to be a great one. It is the second edition of the Budget to Bougie series that I'm doing and we are going to be focusing on rustic yarns at a variety of price points you can actually see the yarns that I'm uh, kind of sampling or using for my research right behind me over here. But you definitely want to tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. In the meantime, happy knitting, happy making. If you are in the United States or you're celebrating Thanksgiving this next coming week, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays to you and yours. And to everybody, be well, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.